Hey guys, it's Miskatonic. Welcome to Let's Play Kingdom of Roos now. Um, when we left off, we had just uh, finished our war with the uh, Rurikids and uh, claimed um, not only their land, but also their, their kingdom title. Um, so I guess this did refresh, and we are uh, exactly at our domain limit. That went up quite a bit. Um, Uh, and we did inherit this war. And I'm thinking that once this war is over, uh, I might try to um, release these uh, problem uh, these problem counts and then just conquest them. Uh, so like Smolensk here. And I, I may even do that with the duchy. Uh, I, I don't... Um, not that I don't want a duchy vassal, but... You know, I especially don't want one who's a Norse, um, Norseman, and I definitely don't want them holding two of them. So, I think I will just release them and, uh, conquest them, you know, every few years or whatever. It's gonna look a little ugly, but eventually it'll, it'll work out better. So, that's the plan. And I was looking around, um, there are these counts down here who are Russian and Slavic, and a few of them agreed to be vassalized. So I'm going to send those offers uh, those offers out. This guy's... Uh, I don't border him, so it, I do get a distant round penalty, so as soon as these guys accept, I think that'll change. Uh, this guy, though, I think he might accept. So, peacefully, uh, we're able to vassalize three people, so that's pretty cool. Uh, these guys are probably Polish, Lithuanian. Uh, Polotsk here is a duke and therefore thinks he's uh, too good to be vassalized, so that's fine. Um, this guy is Estonian. Interesting. Um, anyway, so we're going to continue this war and then uh, I'm going to experiment and see how releasing that one count works before I go ahead and release the entire duchy. So Vladimir is actually almost uh, is almost certainly going to fall before I can actually save it. Unfortunately. Alright, so uh, I got a few new vassals for free. This guy probably will accept now. And he does. I did send that, didn't I? Yes, it's taken a while. Okay, so let's see how this is going. Apparently it takes forever to walk through here. And I have a grandson, Sudislav um, Dostoevsky. Alright, so I got another vassal. Unfortunately, uh, Crimea itself is held by our faithful friends, the Khazarians who are actually our allies now. Uh, they did try to take Chortitza a while back, but now we're best friends, so that's cool. I don't know how long that'll last, though. Alright, so Vladimir has fallen. Hopefully we can get there pretty soon. And who's this? Princess Irina. I think this is our last daughter. I'm just gonna let our wife do it. And my heir actually has a a son or a kid. It's a uh, it's another daughter. So the only uh, vassal inheritance warning now is uh, that huge duchy. And holding two titles, it's just going to be too hard to uh, take that out from under him. Alright, so I'm going to send these guys here. This could probably, yeah, we'll just assault that. And then we'll send this guy over here.
Looks like he is going to get away. He's running across the river. Uh, with this amount of troops, um, I'm not too worried about a river crossing. Alright, so this person was um, assassinated by her husband? Yes. <laughs> um, apparently she wasn't attractive enough. But she was attractive. Alright, so now we're getting a bunch of plots. I usually just end them. Um, at least until it gets uh, uh, too, too annoying. Alright, so we'll send these guys back and let them go home. And my retinue is uh, more than capable of finishing the siege. So another, our other son is of age. Um, he's not, not really up to par with his brothers, but he still deserves a marriage, I suppose. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. Alright, so, oh, we are still living in Kiev. Um, my only, uh, my only guess as to why that is is because it's not in the De Jure Kingdom of Rus, uh, which means, uh, I write to you with bad news from Kiev, my efforts to squeeze extra taxes, uh, okay, so it's just a revolt risk kind of deal, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, the only way I can think of, uh, escaping that is just to give everything away. You know, hopefully, uh, you know, I guess sooner rather than later, but I think I'm okay for now. He's not, not too old. Right, so people are, are uh, assassinating each other. Let's make her end her plot. Uh, I watched my son stand his love at play with another child yesterday and noticed that he didn't want to share his toys. Uh, I don't want to lose five prestige, so I'm going to give a lecture on charity. And my truce is already up, almost, with uh, the old king of, uh, of Rus. People are trying to kill each other left and right. It's a problem with the big, big, uh, big realm. Alright, so we captured a lot of people. Um, I'm just going to try to ransom them all back. I guess I can only do one at a time, right? Uh, I'm at 100% though. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> and as soon as I imprison him, I should be able to uh, revoke his title for free. Uh, he's been imprisoned. I released uh, the captives I did take. And let's see if I can uh, revoke his title now. I can't. I can't actually do that. Um, so I may just... Alright, so let's let's try this uh, independence plan with uh, Smolensk here. He's a Norseman. Um, he's already converted his province to Norse, which is, you know, obviously not ideal. Uh, so I'm going to grant him independence. He's going to like it. Uh, Okay, so I've granted him independence. He's now uh, the Count of Smoleskia. And uh, I, I assume I have a truce? I don't. Alright, so we can immediately <laughs> conquest him and uh, take all the holdings directly. Alright, I, I, I'm, I'm sure I, I'm able to afford another retinue too at this point. So I'm going to get more skirmish retinues. Um, and uh, at this point, 2,000 should be enough for these border skirmishes. I don't think there's a crossing here. There's not. So we'll meet up in Viasma. <clears throat> Still making uh, Bulgaria like us. And I had a Greek Slavic uh, lowborn, apparently. It's kind of interesting. If he was Orthodox, I would have made him my uh, uh, priest and tried to convert. Alright, so he's running away um, all the way up to Novgorod, apparently. And uh, the Prince of Rus is trying to conquest one of my vassals. And uh, speaking of that, I really should try to raise this, but... Oh, because I'm a pagan, I can't, so... That... I should have released him as soon as possible. Alright, so he's going after what? Oh, he's going after these guys. What I could do is try to get there first. Yeah, I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to conquest Kostroma. Let's see if I can raise troops up uh, nearby. All I need to do is get there before he does, so I'm in control of the siege. Uh, he doesn't like me. He's not going to give me any levies. Um... Alright, so as long as one of these stacks gets there before he does, then I should be okay. He might... Alright, he's going after my big stack. He's going to get there on the 9th. There's no way he can escape. That's okay. As long as I can surrender... Yeah, alright, he just ran away. And I am... I am in, the, in control of the siege, so everything's working out great. I don't care... No, let's, we can go back to Smolensk now, at this point. Actually, let's go Let's go kill his army here. Put some leaders in. Got a 30, 30 marshal guy here, so I'm going to take a look at this... Uh, take a look at our advisors again. Definitely want him in charge there. I'm going to make him drop out and bring him down to Kiev. I'm sure we have better than that. We got a 19, and I don't know. No, our wife's still the best. Um, for a priestess, yeah, that's fine. 
Actually, let me, look, let me look at this. She wants to... Okay, she does want to become the Diviner, so... I will give him the job. And send him there. Okay, so... He called someone in. Okay. He called in uh, the Mordvins over here. Um... But I think that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, thanks for watching.